Who are we again? It's been a long week, and I'm really tired, so I need you to remind me who I am. You are the one true Niz. Oh, that's oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm the one true Niz. That's right. You are, and you're Bodhi you Agora. Yes, <laughs> yes, but with a with, with a fuller beard. With a Bodhi doesn't have a beard at all, so oh, it's definitely fuller because Bodhi doesn't have a beard. How was your How was your week since I last saw you? Oh gosh, not too bad, not too shabby. Uh, had a had a nice warm day up here. It got up to like forty one degrees, and and I don't today. know where it is today. Uh, no, that was yesterday. I think today it was only supposed to get into the high 20s and then back to the super cold stuff again for the weekend starting tomorrow. So for you, the high 20s is not the super cold stuff. <laughs> That's The high 20s is above the, the daily highs right now. Yeah. 40, well, degrees, was, 40 degrees was the aber, aberration? Yeah. Aberration. I, I thought you were going to say Aborigine. 40 degrees was the Aborigine. That's racist. Yeah. <laughs> Today in Pennsylvania, it was 65 degrees. Wow. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. I didn't get to enjoy much of it because I was stuck on my computer plugging away, writing stories on iState.tv. And Jacob, Jacob LaBelle asked me if I'm feeling any better. Jacob, I'm feeling... I don't know if I'm feeling better, but I'm feeling uh, resolved, I guess, more resolved. And today we're not going to talk about the thing that yesterday pretty much put me in a mood to, uh, let's just say the sixth letter in the alphabet had a dominant position in the show last night. You can go ahead and count, folks, in your did, head. Did there. you use up all your F-bombs? Oh, I month? used, I carpet bombed. Okay, I carpet f bombed is what I did, but I got it all out of my system, so everything's fine. Lose here, so it's it's more. I'm back into a more normal state. Everything's fine. And by the way, I listened to your show last night on Freedom Fiends. It was uh, excellent. Uh, the uh, I guess after the after the first two segments, Michael was on Michael Fiend, and then you and Randy got back to the. Second part of your Bastia presentation, and if you haven't heard it, I strongly recommend you go to freedomfiends.com and look up. I think if you just do a search for Bastia, you'll probably find both your shows. You, you'll get a lot of stuff on there. I think Bastia is prominently featured in the Fiends over the past several years. Yeah, but the actual right show at the top. Yeah. Yeah, the show titles are the first one was Breaking the Law with Bastiat. And the whole point behind that is, is, is talking about how the law, through the, through the eyes of uh, a classical liberal or men statist or other uh, gullible type person that believes that government can be used for good. Oh, well, Bastiat uh, was about, a mini, mini statist. So, yes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It, I, 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 I think, I think he probably got to the, got to the point of realizing that it was an exercise in futility. But, um, he, he talks about how, this is what the law is supposed to do. It's not supposed to go beyond these points. And, and, and that was the first segment of it, uh, the first uh, episode. Yesterday, uh, we did an example with uh, Michael talking about stuff going on with the ranch slaters in Wyoming. Wanting to, slaters, yes. Yeah, wanting to put a porn tax on, on people and uh, block pornography from the uh, – from computers unless you pay like a, a porn tax or something like that. And I'm like, dude, you can ban porn all you want. People just make it in their bathtubs. <laughs> Harder and more yeah. dangerous. <laughs> so so talking so talking about the talking about what has actually happened with the law and the actual history through throughout all of time, yesterday's episode was called Bastiat Part Two, The Law Breaks You. Yes. And and you 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 were given some apologies to Bastia, giving him a little bit of leeway for being a mini state saying, "Hey man, he was discovering concepts that nobody else knew. He was, you know, he was on his way and, you know, I mean, you know, you got to give him points for that. I think I think you're right. You do. You do have to give him points for that. And actually, that book, The Law, those were I mean, the two key books that were really other than Lou Sander telling me asking me to what the foundation for rule of law is actually that that was what started me uh but these the no treason 
by Lysander Spooner and Bastias the Law. Those were, the, those were the two key books that finally finished me in my coercive enterprise type thinking. I couldn't escape. Once I had read those two books, I was done in. And he, and you know, I, I, I came to the same conclusion that I think most people who read the law uh, come to. Oh, man, Fred, you're so close. If you follow the own lo if you follow your own logic, you're going to get there. But but there was a part yeah. that couldn't quite get there. But still, yeah. just which which two books did you say? The Law and what else? Uh, no Treason by Lysander Spooner. Okay, there was another one, and I had recommended this essay to you. It was by uh, John Hastness of uh, Georgetown, maybe. Uh, I, I can't remember which university he's a law professor at. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's an anarchist also. But uh, he wrote an essay called The Myth of the Rule of Law. You know, and I, that, don't, and that I one, remember now, I don't remember if it was that. I don't remember my impression of it. But now that you say it, I do remember you did send me an essay. But it wasn't the essay. But I think the essay pointed me in other directions. I, I know that uh, I know that when you, when I when I recommended it to you, I said, "Now I got to warn you, it, it, it's dry and academic, so uh, it, it's not going to be the most exciting." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Or you're like, "Yeah, I, I, I was like going to destroy it." it and, and, yeah, <laughs> and you read it, and you're like, "Holy crap, that makes sense." Yeah, so, I don't. You you remember better than me. I don't remember. I'll have yeah, to take your word for it. Yeah, but. And, and, and after reading it, you were like, holy cow, maybe you're onto something, silly guy from the internet. Anarcho whack job. I don't even know how, how did we even, actually, it's because of you that I discovered the Freedom Fiends, because I found out you were on the Freedom Fiends. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all, you're to blame. I don't even know how we connected. How the heck did you ever connect with what what was at the time a pretty far right Christian conservative how the I was heck slumming. did that happen i was slumming <laughs> <laughs> i'm still a christian i'm not a conservative so oh, yeah oh, I, oh. I i travel in hold on one in, second in wide circles hold on one moment i, I got would you like me to keep talking while you do yeah, whatever yeah. it is that you do? Oh, so, okay. Well, i i have a ten, i have a tendency to travel in in weird circles and, and talk to a wide variety of people so that's quite possibly how it happened was it's just i knew somebody that you knew and and next thing you know we're arguing calling each other mother bleeper oh and man i think else. we had some good i i don't remember them all anymore but i i i think we had some good ones and i think i may have even called you a commie a few times <laughs> I don't remember, but I think, I think. Yes, Sarah, it's a search and rescue mission that I'm carrying out. Sarah Franklin, who is who is the owner of the Liberty Principle Facebook page. So it's good to see you, Sarah. Uh, but I, I, I think I've probably, I, and honestly, what, what I do remember is I was going to disprove you. I was going to put you in your place. I had the intellectual power to go out there and find the foundation for rule of law, and I was going to come back, and I was going to show you. Didn't happen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you're over there Smart. going, I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> Smarter people than you have tried and well, failed. The, the problem is, no matter how smart you are, if the facts don't back you up, it's not going to happen. And the that that's the problem. It didn't matter how smart I was. The the facts absolutely don't but, but don't don't back that up. I guess we and I, I, I do have to give you credit for one thing because you were able to admit that the facts didn't back you up. In in many cases, people will will hold on to a really bad idea and defend it like it was their mother. Well, it was they, difficult to let go. I'll tell you that it was. I knew there were going to be a lot of changes in my life, and I won't get into details now, but I, I knew there were a lot of associations, a lot of things I was doing that would probably come to an end and actually would hurt me, even financially. So <laughs> it, was, it was difficult, but I, yeah, when, once, once I crossed over, so to speak, I, I just 
from from my own moral code, I I I couldn't turn back because for me, I associate the course of enterprise with wholesale slaughter, death, mayhem, and destruction. So I I can't go back to pretending that that's okay. I just I can't do it. That that is that is something that I shared. You can't unhear what you have heard. You can't unring that bell. So you have what is heard and what is unheard. And once it becomes heard, it can it cannot be unheard again. Right. That's that was me. I think some yeah. people. Yeah. You know, I I I think some people who quote cross over. I think there are a lot of reasons why people suddenly turn to anarchy, and it's not always the reason that I just gave you. Sometimes, I think sometimes. You have people like their team always loses and they're like, our team is never going to win. I should probably try to just like find a way to bow out. And so then they find a way to bow out. They say, I'm an anarchist. And then when they see that that team that they used to belong to might actually win, then they're like, well, maybe, maybe I can go back. <laughs> And then you find out they really they really hadn't fundamentally come to that understanding of exactly what it is that a coercive enterprise does mm -hmm. and what it does to human beings. They're just trying to to find a way to be able to 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 live with themselves. And the fact it would be like I followed the Eagles for years, losers, 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 losers. At some point, I could have just said, you know what, I'm just going to bow out of football, just going to bow out of football you know not because of you know concussions or you know it's a statist ceremony or whatever i'm really I, I could i could tell myself all those things but in reality i'm just bowing out because my team always loses but then 2018 comes along and the eagles win the super bowl which by the way was freaking glorious and I'm suddenly i'm back in now i never left football but still i think I don't know. I don't know if you know if you agree with me. If you if you've seen this in the Liberty community, well, being from Detroit, I'll never have to worry about the Lions winning no. a football or no. Super Bowl game, uh, which means that we won't have to worry about any uh, any uh, riots in the city burning down because of an NFL championship. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe baseball or basketball, but definitely not from NFL. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I've seen a, a number of people who came to the the, the Liberty community. The uh, they became anarchists in in uh, January of an odd numbered year or something like that. And you know when the next uh, even number year comes up, round about <laughs> maybe July or something like that, they're, they're going to start being like. Well, you know, there, there's this guy out there. There could there could be a chance, and I kind of fall in that category myself because I did get on the Ron Paul bandwagon. I was on, I was on my way down the road to just straight up anarcho capitalism, and by anarcho capitalism, I mean actual anarchy and capitalism, not fascism and uh, statism. Not anarcho fascism under the yellow and black colors. Right, right, right. Not, not, not nationalism, flag worship, and supporting uh, the coercive enterprise of the state, but an actual, real, no rulers and free markets. So I guess maybe uh, market anarchism would be the way to go. But anyway, I saw I the like Ron that Paul thing better. going on. Yeah, yeah. I saw the I saw the the fervor over Ron Paul, and and it it, it was a good way to meet chicks. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to hurt one of our time. You're gonna hurt one of our listeners' feelings, Becca. I'm sorry, Becca. She just she just posted this comment before you said that. I still like Ron and Rand. <laughs> you, you, you know what? I I still like Ron. He's my all time favorite government thug. He is. He's the Rand. Best. Rand can go eat a bag of ducks. Sorry, <laughs> Becca. But anyway, so, so I'm I not a Rand a, fan either, Becca. Yeah, I'm I'm not on the Rand wagon. I don't stand with Rand, but uh. <laughs> I, re I remember seeing all the fervor. I'm like, well, gee, maybe, just maybe, the there could be a chance. Maybe something could happen. You know, hey, let me get involved in this. And hey, there's chicks. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking, you know, hey, you know, there's a possibility. But it was actually Ben Stone, the bad Quaker. I, I listened to a podcast of his, and, and this is when the fiends were. Well, they weren't brand new. They'd been around for a little while, but they weren't even on LRN yet. It was it was just a straight up podcast, and I had. I had just discovered them at the time. Just a ghetto uh, I, podcast? That's how how very, how low class. 
but yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I wasn't, I wasn't part of the Facebook team. You know, the, I was an admin for the page. I, I was still brand new. This is when I first friended Michael and, and, uh, Nima. So I, we're talking way, 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 way back when. And, uh, Michael says, here, listen to this podcast. And, and Ben was explaining how Ron Paul is never going to get elected. And for a summary, ah, nah, go on. Yeah, the people are gonna, they're gonna take back their power over government. And he's going over all this <laughs> stuff. By the end of the podcast, I'm like, I, I, I got like door hangers on the on the table. I'm tearing them up, throwing them in the garbage can, and wiping the tears from my eyes because Ron's <laughs> never gonna save, restore the republic, and 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 bring the constitution back in line, and and all that other flaggy stuff. Ken Otter so. just said, "Get them, Lou." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, so 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 then the bad Quaker is is your an anarcho dad. Like you're my anarcho dad, so that makes him my anarcho granddad. I well, thought I know that. Actually Tom Woods was probably the the first one to lead me along the way. Uh Ben Ben kind of led me home. Well, yeah. So, I'm going to call I'd rather call Ben your anarcho dad just cuz it's I want him to be my anarcho granddad and not Tom Woods. See, that yeah. works out better for me. There's a lineage there that I, I prefer. I mean, don't get me wrong. But, I like Tom Woods. Got nothing against Tom well, Woods. As a matter of fact, I, I, Tom I, Woods was was one of the early factors as well because Tom Woods, uh, what's it called the uh, the secret history of the U.S. or what, what was what's what's his? Oh, polit- politically incorrect. Politically incorrect. Yeah. yeah, that's a must listen. Listen to his series of politically incorrect history of the of the U.S. and. That that'll affect you. That will profoundly yeah. affect you. Suddenly, you realize Lincoln wasn't Lincoln. Yeah. Well, he was Lincoln. It's just he well, wasn't he a wasn't, good guy. He wasn't Lincoln. So, when people think Lincoln, he wasn't that Lincoln. So Ben is my anarcho daddy, and uh, Woods is my anarcho uncle. So thanks, there Uncle Tom. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, you got that in. And with that, why don't we get to uh, shorter leash? What do you say? Did, I, did we finish the story, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If we didn't finish the story, keep going. I'm sorry. For, Go ahead. Forget the forget the show. We're just going to sit around drinking Rubeus and and. Oh, what are you drinking there? Stuff. This this is Rubeus. It's a raspberry ale, I think, or maybe. Oh man, I don't think it's an, I, I don't think it's an IPA, but it's, it's I an ale. I love I IPAs. Have like every couple months, so. I anyway. feel gypped. I'm drinking uh, Pepsi. Sponsor of the show, not a sponsor of the show. Sponsor of the show, not a sponsor of the show. There you go, right there. Pepsi, the real thing. Is that what it says? Did it used to say the real thing? Is that that was? I think that was Coke. Oh my! Oh, oh, Pepsi's not going to be sponsoring us next next week. Oh, and Larry says Larry's always fun. You know, Larry. Do you know Larry? Larry's yeah, he's a twat waffle. Yeah, everybody hates you, Larry. Okay, you are a horrible everybody, human being. Uh, nowhere Oops. in the show notes does it say you guys will still be telling each other how wonderful and special the other is. Eighteen minutes in, you know, have you ever heard a little thing called spontaneous spontaneous order, Larry? You might want to Google it. You know, Google taxation is theft and spontaneous order, and then it'll start. It'll start to come together for you. I, I think I'm ready to go to Shorter Leash if you are. Yeah. It, well, it's not like we're charging him extra for it. So I'm. This well, is Larry, free. actually, I am. <laughs> so, oh, okay. I so actually anyway, am bo- charging Larry. So, the bottom line is uh, Ron Paul was a detour off of the path of liberty for me. And I saw this stuff going on. I'm like, yeah, it could happen. It, it's really happening. And then it didn't happen. And so. <laughs> Well, he was up there on the stage, and, it's, it's happening, and then it didn't. Yeah. So, so <laughs> when the next election cycle came around, and everybody was getting all excited about whatever it was, uh, I was just kind of like, "Whatever, bro." See you in a couple months when all this silliness is over, and and you come back. So anyway, so, so Ron was like the the last vestige of stadiumism that you were holding on to, and then. And then that's it. And then Larry was, said, that's how gay pot podcasts break out. Don't ask me how I know that. I won't. I won't ask you how. I won't. I don't want to hear about your gay podcast, Larry. Not that there's anything wrong with that. 
Well, it's probably not his fault. He probably just got sucked into it. <laughs> but but Ron Paul, Ron Paul was was the final false prophet for me in the in the religion of limited statism. Yep. Yeah, I I, I couldn't stand Ron Paul in 2012. I was still very much a state of state fest. I'm like, whenever he would talk about foreign policy, I would lose my mind. Whenever he would say, what business is of the United States to tell Iran they can't have nuclear weapons? I was like, are you out of your mind? They're going to kill us. That was me in 2012. So I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand him in 2012. So I never had, I never had any of that. I... <laughs> Uh, Ken said, whenever I listen to The Fiends, I always mistake Lou's voice for Ben. Lols. Oops. <laughs> I don't. But right now, I definitely... But Ben, but you ben, has, that very, ben has that very smooth, uh, calming voice. Uh, yeah. Like just a wonderful yeah. tone. And, yeah. and the, the things that he says... When you hear so. Ben's voice, you feel like, hey, I know I got to go to the bathroom, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to get to the bathroom in time because Ben is calming me down. Everything's fine. When mm -hmm. you hear Lou's voice, even if you don't have to go to the bathroom, you end up peeing your pants. See, that's the difference. <laughs> I mean, there's similar timbre, but that's a, that's a big difference going on there. And uh, Ryan says, do you still think they are going to kill us, Paul? No. No, I don't. I, 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 I believe I'm, I'm much more likely to be killed by a toilet falling out of a plane and falling through my house and striking me dead than Iran is going to kill me. Yeah. Or being struck by a couple of $24 million refrigerators. That's falling true. from the sky. They, they didn't Hashtag pay 24 million. Hashtag fiscal conservatism. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't pay $24 million for no refrigerators they paid 10 bucks and they wrote down 24 million so they could do whatever the heck they wanted to do with that 24 million dollars you know the game that's 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 what they're doing yeah now we're ready now are we're you ready. ready finally for woof, woof. the shorter leash here we go here arr, comes arr, the sh arr, arr, arr. Arr. <laughs> our course of association shortening the leash on their pets we cover stories of the state the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. This is the shorter leash, and I'm assuming that you read over this story with a fine tooth comb and you've got it nailed down. Tell me Kinda everything close, about yeah. this story. Go ahead. Tell me. Share with me exactly what this story is. I'm going to take notes, and I'll grade you at the end. Go ahead. You have 30 seconds. So there's <laughs> no, a group called. Okay. It's, uh, what is it? It's the IMF. Oh, no, it's the World Bank. They're the World interchangeable. Bank. They're both uh, really, really evil, evil, evil things. So I'm, I tell you what, I'm going to just read a little bit over the, the straight news thing, such as that is. And this is from smartcitiesdive.com. So the World Bank and Environmental Advocacy Group, human haters, sorry, I shouldn't have said that, Global Environmental Facility, or GEF, not Jeff, by the way, GEF. Or maybe it's <laughs> Jeff. I think Jeff sounds better, doesn't it? GIF or it's Jeff? Yeah. Yes, that's what that's exactly what I was ripping on. <laughs> exactly. So they announced the launch of a new urban sustainability framework during the World Urban Forum. Now see, I use the word sustainability and I'm I'm a, I'm totally comfortable with the word. But when I'm talking about sustainability, I'm talking about local individual free association sustainability, doing stuff with within your own life and within your own community, your free association community, that that allows you to to be self sustaining. When they use the word sustainability, they mean a a a tiny little central planning committee, uh, socially engineering all of the ideal outcomes for everyone else. So just just keep that in mind. Their sustainability is very different than my sustainability. 
Uh, and and they rele- and they revealed this during the World Urban Forum. And the guide is designed to help cities become more sustainable through a four stage approach. Now, Lou, I want you to go ahead and alert me the minute that you hear the crazy. Ready? Create a vision for that sustainability. Determining financing to put plans into practice. Monitor and evaluate implementation the framework lays out six key dimensions of urban sustainability governance and integrated planning financial sustainability economic competitiveness should have been a warning there environmental and resource efficiency low carbon and resilience and social inclusiveness. That's the kind of stuff that you want the most powerful financing institution in the world to be doing, isn't it? See Absolutely. You see a problem there, or do you welcome your war ba- your World Bank overlords? Well, I think uh, what's her name, uh, Taylor Swift, did it best with her with her song "State Is Gonna State, State, yeah. State." <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, this is, and actually, in the article here, I think, oh, no, I don't, oh, where is it? Oh, I didn't link to, you know what, that must have been another World Bank story. But Google Corbett Report, World Bank Corbett Report, uh, James Corbett did a really excellent involved report on exactly what the World Bank is and what their game is. To me, what the World Bank is is this. Instead of using guns, instead of using force, intimidation, they use the power of the purse. In the same way that the federal government uses the power of the purse over the state government, and the state government uses it over the local government. So what they essentially do is, and and the World Bank, the World Bank, you know, it sucks your resources dry, and then it gives you back some of them, uh, demanding that you pay an interest for it. In the case of the government, they take your resources in the form of taxation, and then they 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 give you back some of what they took, but they put a string on it. They say. We're not going to give you back the resources unless, like, like they did with the highways, where they said, you're not going to get any highway funding if you don't lower the speed limit everywhere to 55 miles per hour. They, they didn't write a, a law saying that they had to do it. They just made it a condition of funding, see? And that's what the World Bank does. It's just a condition of funding. They're literally reengineering whole nations using the threat of cutting off their capital. That's what they do. That's the World Bank. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they they have people over a barrel, and they use this this magical power that they have. And when you consider that the the banking system, the central banking with fiat currencies, that money can actually just be created by pushing buttons on a computer and saying, "Poof, here we have money," uh, doing some little casting a spell on some paper or some or some ones and zeros, and all of a sudden, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. Here, you have all this money. Go do stuff with it. And people accept it as that. And it, it, it's not something that was earned. It, it wasn't a, it wasn't acquired through actually doing something beneficial to the world, like providing goods and services. It was just poofed into, into thin air or out of thin air. I don't know. It was Why not both. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, why not? It's just as yeah. believable, right? Yeah. So, so you have these people that. And they they have a tendency to be control freaks, and use their control freakiness in uh, in in the world like that. And and they do have uh, they they do have people over a barrel, uh, particularly when when politicians sign their their uh, citizens their their populations onto all these loans. It's, it's, you know, it's the, the old thing about the social contract. Well, I didn't sign it. Well, nobody signed those mortgage papers either, but. Here they are with a mortgage, and they're not going to get a house at the end. It's never going to be paid off. You know, a lot of, of uh, I'm going to say, alt-righty-leaning folks look to Africa, and they say, see, man, see what's going on in Africa? See all these nations? They're so backwater. They're so corrupt. 
What the heck? You better not be. Are you kidding me? Oh, never mind. Whew, I had a little panic attack there. I thought my computer was updating all of a sudden. <laughs> that, no, that, that would not have been good. Uh, but uh, so what was I saying? I got distracted by that holy you're, terror. You're, 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 you're talking about Africa being backwards and, and oh, everything else and the so, alt-right pointing at it saying, look, look, look. <laughs> See, they can't do anything. So, so what happens is the you know these these nations. Okay, they start off. They do need resources. They need capital. They they have needs, and uh, the companies come in and they make these deals with them that uh, they don't benefit the whole nation. They only bet the small number of owners and managers of that particular mm -hmm. coercive enterprise, whether it's Sudan or whatever it is. And so the the, the country's still losing money. And then the World Bank comes along, and the World Bank, yo, brother. You need some cash? Yo, you'll take this cash that I magically printed and that the U.S. military will assure is legit, okay? So take this money. Oh, that's great. And the folks at the, the highest levels, there's the one that, they're the ones that benefit the most from that money. It's not trickling down, okay? When it comes to Africa, there is no trickle-down economics, okay? Because when these guys, after they, they, when they take a piss, they are literally peeing in their own toilets that are hermetically sealed from the outside world. There's no trickle, okay? There's absolutely no trickle. So then... The IMF has interest rates and other conditions for loans that all of a sudden these these countries are indebted to the IMF ad infinitum, maybe forever. I don't know. Uh, but but for a very, very, very long time, what money they do make. Well, I should say what money they are able to steal from their quote unquote citizens a bulk of it has to just pay the interest on the loan that the World Bank gave them, and the IMF does similar things. Gee, I wonder why these countries are struggling to make it. I just, I don't know. I, I can't imagine why why they're struggling. It's weird. Uh, well, I really, it's it, it's it, it's socialism because you have you have the government in control of the economy it is it's not like the people in africa lack resources as far as natural resources go there, there's plenty of resources there uh, you, you don't have the means to properly exploit them and when i say exploit i don't mean like the commies mean when they say exploit i <laughs> i mean i mean go and, and collect these resources and do something with them rather than just letting letting them sit around and and their leaders and leaders uh, politicians, whatever, yeah, the, 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 these people that they call leaders, they'll sign, they'll sign them on for all these for all these deals, and they're the ones that benefit. And the the, the common man that winds up out there getting stuck with the bill, gets stuck with the bill, and doesn't get any benefit from from these great deals that are created. So it, it, it's really not a whole lot different from East Germany or the Soviet Union because you had all these all these. Leaders, I mean, you don't see a whole lot of skinny dictators out there for the most Not part. Not really, uh, yeah, unless I, they're dying of cancer. <laughs> yeah, the, which isn't the, often. They're all pretty but, well fed. They're all yeah. pretty well fed. So when when you have when you have these well fed dictators out there in the and also the party apparatchiks are, are well to do, the common man, you know, the the worker that supposedly this whole setup is 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 there to benefit is the one that gets the least out of it. And by continuing this cycle of socialism, that's why you get Africa being a Schumer hole as it, it is. It is a Schumer hole. And it's yes. and it's not because of DNA, okay? Right. It's because of World Bankia, yeah. not just World I, Bank, but but stuff along that line. With World Bank being a huge, huge factor, picked up right. right, right. Wow, that's great, awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I didn't know we were live, but there you go, we're back. So, <laughs> well, they tried. You know that was a World Bank. Come on, everybody yeah. knows it was the World Bank. Yep. That was. Not even this. This happened to me on the fiends. I was covering one of your episodes. That's true. And you were covering a we story got, of mine. We got permazucked. You were actually covering a per a personal story of mine. Yes, yes. Was, and we got zucked for it. 
Yeah. So that, that was, that was Soros Brothers and uh, George Koch uh, got us, or Koch. George Koch? I can't remember. Koch? George Koch, did you say? Is that his name? Coach. That's a weird name. Coach. Koch. You don't want to have the last Koch. name Koch. Yeah. Or Coach. Coach. Or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I I was actually about ready to transition us to our next story. Did you want? Do you want to go to our next story? Because do I don't it. want to go too much further into the World Bank thing because we 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 you actually. Oh no no! Remember, off the leash. We're coming back to it. Yes. So now now we've been on the shorter leash, and now you guys have been good. You've been good little boys and girls. And it's time, it's time to extend. It's time for... How are coercive associations lengthening the leash on their pets? We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in lengthening the leash on those they presume to rule. All right. (laughs) Almost forgot to go to the next scene. So... Uh, by the way, now, Lou, you should be able to see the cool background. I have the background. I think it's the perfect longer leash background. Do you see it? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking at the live feed, and no, I'm not seeing it. But actually, while well, the live feed's not playing yet, let me, let me refresh it. Refresh. 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 How refreshing. Well, we, we got, I guess, basically two stories kind of rolled up in one. Well, one of them... Kind of shorter leashy. This one is, I picked this story for longer leash because this really shows the true <laughs> nature of long. Oh, you see it? Oh, yeah, you the cage. Yeah. yeah. You got the flag and behind the, yeah, I think that, I thought that was. <laughs> That's your longer leash, folks, right there. But you see the puppy there? He's happy. He's on a longer leash. Look at him. He's a happy boy. He's yeah. on his longer leash. He's a happy boy. <laughs> He I'm going to get right a into this. Six-foot leash for a 72-inch leash. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no. He, oh, no, wait, wait. Hold on. Now I'm a little confused. Hold on. He had a six-foot leash. Now he has a 72-inch leash, right? That's yes. Okay, great. Yes. That's longer, longer. leash. Absolutely. So uh, Colorado Bill seeks to fix, I'll put that in quotes, civil asset forfeiture law after cops complain about lost revenue. So after Colorado uh, attempted to rein back the abuse of police departments by limiting how they could use civil asset forfeiture, you're going to be surprised at this, Lou. Uh, the police weren't happy about it. Oh, the police <gasps> departments. No, no. They, they complained. Now, what the police department said was, listen, civil asset forfeiture is an effective tool to stop people from doing dangerous, harmful things to our citizens, and we will not allow that. We are here. That's actually not what they said. No, they said that it's a loss of revenue for the department. That's <laughs> that was the sales point. That's that's literally why they went to the what, what is the 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 capital of Colorado? I can't even remember offhand. What the freak is the capital? Is it Denver? Is it is it really Denver? I don't is it, know. Is it Boulder? A boulder. What the heck? It's boulder now. <laughs> if it isn't, it is now. Uh, boulder. Boulder. Yeah, and they were boulder. Very boulder. I just, what I can't imagine, though, are the, the people that live in Colorado that see the police going to the legislature, not saying, listen, man, this is a really effective tool for us to keep dangerous people. From. No, no, no. No, no. It's like, dude, you took our revenue. So they're. Go ahead. Well, it's, it's, it's not just Colorado. It's uh, it's also Alabama. And there's an article. Get, from, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Just yeah, there's an right article in it. National Review. And I, I have to give National Review some credit because they, they haven't been completely bootlicking in, in regards to police over the past couple of years. They've actually started to uh, – They've actually started to see the course of enterprise for what it is. And uh, the headline in this is Alabama sheriffs and DAs. No incentive to enforce the law if we can't keep the funds. Wow. The Alabama yeah. Sheriff's Association and Alabama District's, District Attorney's Association are not pleased. Talking to AL.com, 
uh, Alabama. The directors of both organizations penned an op-ed in defense of civil forfeiture. They they opened with blatant dishonesty, claiming that the practice only targets criminals when in at least a quarter of Alabama forfeiture cases, charges are never filed, let alone convictions made. Now, this is National Review saying that this is blatant dishonesty. The op is actually is actually refreshing in that the authors don't hide the fact that police departments pursue civil forfeiture for personal gain. Speaking of the reformers' plan to prevent police departments from keeping the money and assets they seize, they write, sending the proceeds of forfeiture to the state's general fund would result in fewer busts of drugs, of drug and stolen property rings. What incentive would local police and sheriffs have to invest manpower, resources, and the time in these operations if they don't receive the proceeds servant. to cover their costs? To serve and protect. Uh, I didn't realize the the police department was in uh, business. Oh, so wait. So if I call them a course of enterprise, that's like, that's spot on. Yeah. So it it, it ends here with, uh, isn't it the job of law enforcement to enforce the law? Isn't that why they are paid? Given that many violent crimes happen in the absence of property on the, on the scene to seize. Does this mean that Alabama law enforcement have no incentive to spend resources fighting them? I mean, First of all, they, they, they get, they get the, they get the tax salute and that's supposed to pay them for going out and doing their jobs. They've used civil asset forfeiture as a way to pad their budgets and get more freebies and, and all this other stuff. Shiny and the com- new cool Dodge Viper police car, whatever, Dodge yeah, Charger yeah, police stuff, cars. Stuff that they seize and keep for themselves. And what's really, uh, What's really interesting is the comments on here, most of these comments are saying end civil forfeiture. Uh, loot was a traditional way of rewarding mercenary troops. Perhaps we should expand the bonuses cops and DAs expect to include rape and pillage as well. And a response was, what makes you think they don't? Now, this is a conservative website. That's amazing. Now, here, yeah. That, now, here's my because uh, wait, but before you go on, because I've actually talked to a number of conservatives that are like, well, yeah, it's it's kind of a little bit out of control, but but really, civil asset forfeiture, you know, it's a valuable tool. You know, it's 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 a valuable tool to 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 keep the drug dealers from using their assets to continue to do drug enterprises. I'm like, I don't care if they do their drug enterprises. I'm not. Thank the the, I thank them for their service, and I don't even use their service. Right, I don't either. <laughs> But here's my favorite comment. But without government police, highwaymen would be looting and pillaging. Oh, no. Theft and violence have never been aspects of freedom. They have always been considered criminal acts or enumerated powers. It's nice to see the honesty that cops are are government thugs, hired muscle for the politicians, and street criminals. It's time to abolish government policing in its entirety and replace it with 100% private security and protection. Who wrote that? that? That was mine. Okay. I was I, suspicious. I was like, wait, this has a, a Lewish vibe to it. I, ah. Oh, yeah. my. Oh, gosh. I, I, it would, I know would that have been nobody, so, nobody expected to hear that from me, probably. <laughs> I was hoping it was one of the conservatives. I were like, there is hope. There is hope, children. Children, he's a listener. everybody, hold on. <laughs> he's a listener. He's, he's so, a listener. So if I may, uh, I have a relevant quote that I've recently used. Um, This plunder may be only an exceptional blemish in the legislation of a people, and in this case, the best thing that can be done without so many speeches and lamentations is to do away with it as soon as possible, notwithstanding the clamors of interested parties. But how is this to be distinguished? Very easily. See whether the law takes from some persons that which belongs to them to give to others what does not belong to them. See whether the law performs for the profit of one citizen and to the injury of others, an act which the citizen cannot perform without committing a crime. Is that Fred? That is Claude Frederic Bastiat. <laughs> hey, you almost said it in a real French accent that time. <laughs> that was I don't have a French accent. Good. I have a I have a German accent. So, so the longer leashes, listen, man, we're going to change civil asset forfeiture to disincentivize cops so that they don't use civil asset forfeiture as a way to simply raise revenue for, for the police department. That's the longer leash. And then right behind that longer leash gets the reach around. And the reach around is like <laughs> your leash is going out, but there's this giant elongated steady arm reaching underneath you, grabbing you in the nethers 
And you don't even notice it because you're just so happy because your leash is longer. And then all of a sudden, before it's too late, yank. <laughs> they pull you right back. That's the longer <laughs> leash. And I think this story perfectly illustrates that because now they're scrambling to to appease people who they're not coming to the state saying this is an effective tool. They're saying, dude, you're taking away our money, man. We need our money. Yo, yo, we're going to get our money. That Tracy Morgan character, that Tracy Morgan lawyer from uh, Saturday Night Live. Oh, we're going to get your money. Yeah. You know, I'm, That's I'm who thinking they of the character from Gonna Get You, Sucker. Bitch better have my money. <laughs> Bitch better have my money. Better have my money. Yeah, that's... Yeah, wait, it, it, you're almost making them seem like they're some sort of gang. Yeah. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, they, they, they are. So my message to the conservatives, quite simply, is stop supporting them. There are numerous cases of the store owner who's making the nighttime deposit of cash getting the assets seized couples going cross country with what is considered large amounts of money first because of all their life savings it, sometimes yeah in 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 a free country okay conservatives in the land of the free where the where the troops defend your freedom what is the maximum amount of money that a free person should be allowed to carry without 50, being without 50 dollar without it being confiscated or without being questioned. How much freedom should people in a free country have to carry property with them? Fifty dollar. I think that's the answer. So with with the number of with the number of common folks that get wrapped up in this, and as I mentioned, many of these cases are never even charged. It's just it's just a quick grab. Uh, you're responsible for paying for your the defense of your money, because you're not charged. The money is charged, and you have to prove that the money is innocent. So your money, yeah. your money is the one that does the perp walk into the courtroom, and has to has to prove itself innocent, or prove the prove the government as being guilty. Of and and what incentive do you think they have to put in uh, mechanisms that allow you to easily prove that it's your money? When as soon as they taking their as they take their money, I don't know. I'm sure they have different procedures. Some may be better than others, but uh, how often do they get the assets? And in a relative short period of time, they have already utilized the assets taken. Yeah, liquidated so, them. Uh, yeah, sold them at auction. Yeah. Stop but, supporting your own enslavement conservatives. Yeah, liberals hate the cops. You should too. Yes, liberals are idiots, but in this particular case they are correct. Wow. Now we just lost half our audience. Well, we only had two people, so Well, <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay, so on that bummer of a note, I think it's time to come back to the World Bank story. But we're going to come back. Well, I'll just play the bump. I'll just play the bump. I'll just play the bump. Woo. How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government, the course of enterprise, the course of association? How, in other words, are people living off the leash and how might you join them? That's right. We're talking about the World Bank and we're talking about off the leash. How's that? By the way, do you notice the background? Well, you'll give it about 10 seconds. You're going to see the background there. And I'm going to leave this up for a little bit. I want to make sure that you see the logo and the background. I want you to pay very close attention. Look at that puppers there in that logo. Go ahead and look at that puppers. Oh, by the way, you hurt Larry's feelings. Again. <laughs> so? I know. I'm just letting you know I thought it was a bonus. Hi, Larry. You're a horrible human being, but I'm glad you're watching. Did, do you see the puppers? Do you see them? I have to refresh again. Oh, you got to so. see the puppers, man. I, I put a lot of work into this. You see him there? You notice something yeah, different about him? puppers. Yeah, yeah, he's off the leash. He's off the and, leash. And, 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 and he has a big, toothy smile. What, does he? I don't see the toothy Yay. smile. I, I just see a smile. I don't see the teeth. You're messing with my head. That's what you're doing. And and you see the background there? Hang, hang, hang on. Hang on. I want to address something. Larry, yes, there is a reason to hate cops. Oh, boy. 
You triggered when the, blue, Rat Larry. Thanks. When, when the politicians strap on their body armor, their own body armor, and start kicking in doors and and violating your right to keep and bear arms, when the when the when the politicians are the ones doing the infringing on their own, when they're the ones that are generating revenue from you on the roadside when you're trying to get to work or go do whatever it was, when you haven't harmed anybody on earth you've just gone about your business you just violated some stupid little bunch of words that they scribble down then i'm going to give the cops a break but until that time i'm going to blame the cops because they are literally the ones that make domestic tyranny possible they are the ones that are kicking in the doors they're the ones that are enforcing it if it wasn't for the cops and you bootlicker cop suckers <laughs> out there yes you larry if it wasn't larry, for you bootlickers larry supporting the cops then the politicians would have to enforce their own nonsense. And if, if they had to enforce their own nonsense, they wouldn't because they're fat, sloppy cowards. They would be disregarded as, as homeless mental cases that they are. Probably better All- dressed than most homeless people, but that's what they would be regarded <laughs> as, as mental cases. So, Larry, yeah, you're a conservative. Yeah, you think with your flag instead of your brain, but grow the fuck up. Wow, you you totally you 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 knocked Lou off the leash. <laughs> let, let me introduce you to that that dick, dipshit Dan from the old show. <laughs> so uh, all I'll say in a in a much more downtone version is when they stop enforcing laws that penalize people who have not done any harm to others then I'm definitely more interested in talking about how there's a few good ones. But until then, their very institution, their very work, demands them on an almost daily basis to violate another individual who has who has done nothing to to anybody else. But I don't want to consider I don't want to continue to Lou and Larry back and forth. I'm sorry, Larry. I don't want to play with you right now. I want to get to the off the leash story, okay? You kids can fight to the death in Thunderdome afterwards. I will pay to see that, by the way. I will totally pay <laughs> to see that. So this story in the first story we talked about how the World Bank is using its almighty magically produced uh, uh, fractional reserve banking dollars to put people in a position where they they got to do what the World Bank tells them or else they will lose and lose big. Well, there's stuff that's happening. And the World Bank and the IMF and other international banking entities don't like it. They're scared as heck about that. Oh, this is the article where I actually link to the Corbett report. So uh, the the article that, that I excerpted in my article from is from Fast Company, and it addresses the ways in which a blockchain financial system could empower, and in some instances it already is, could empower communities and individuals in areas of the world uh, where access to capital to banking is either not available or is simply out of reach. Now, I've taken it beyond that. I don't. I, I mean, it's great. Okay, you're you're talking about using the blockchain to enable people, and what you're really talking about is what's called fintech, and blockchain is a huge part of that. And it, it's enabling people to be able to use capital in lending and whatever capacity that they wouldn't normally have access to. Uh, but I want to go beyond that to talk about the the emerging reality as well of how the blockchain can fundamentally undermine the power of those international banking entities, uh, with the World Bank and the IMF being the biggest offenders as far as I know. Maybe somewhere down the road I'll discover, no, there's this, this huge entity that you've never heard of that's even bigger than them. I don't know. But as of right now, based on my knowledge, they're the biggest offenders, uh, that, that they're able right now to control whole nations through lending. Well, instead of going to the World Bank or the IMF with their owner's interest rates, their terms of loan repayment that keep you indebted to them for decades, if not technically forever, communities can turn to blockchain financing as a way to get around these entities that are designed in the first place to 
to use their capital power to socially engineer a world. And and when they're talking about this this urban sustainability, this global sustainability, all the ways that they're not talking about designing a world that is better for you. They're talking about uh, designing a world that is better for them, that keeps them in a position where they have to deal with the, the least amount of competition as possible. They are assured of their position of ownership within the coercive enterprise zones and to be able to pass on that position of ownership to their progeny. You look very pensive. This is a good story. You should be smiling. This is a happy thing. This is off the leash. This is, this is an example of how emerging technology is fundamentally undermining their bestest and brightest plants. I support it 100%. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I do think that it's wonderful. Uh, I, I do believe that reversing all the things that we talked about in the shorter leash segment and eliminating as much those things as much as humanly possible is a good thing. The, the whole reason that these people have the – the power that they have is they have a control over currency. When you take that control away from them and you completely cut them out, then their control is gone. You don't have the social engineering and the nonsense that goes along with that. You don't have to worry about them centrally planning your life and everything else. You, you've cut the coercive enterprise out of the equation. I just want to say to Larry, some of your comments that you just made were beyond the pale. And I have, I'm going to delete them. That was was really beyond the. Path. Maybe Larry should be deleted. Um, uh, he, he he's my statey statey buddy. I'm not, I'm not gonna delete him, but uh, I'm not gonna allow uh, comments like that to stand. I'm not even gonna repeat them. But Larry, seriously, you're better than that. That was that was way way. And this is off the leash. This is the happy time. Screw you, Larry. We're talking about the blockchain undermining all of your, your little boot, liquor, goose-stepping dreams. Seriously. So, so, so the, 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 the bottom line is that blockchain isn't the only story that's out there. And on iState.tv, you'll find there's a lot of stories out there that, that, that I cover that, uh, that show how there's a lot of stuff going on out there, technology and and uh, there's there. I, I think we talked about microgrids in the past. We talked about 3D printing, and I'm sure that we'll talk about uh, more of these things as well. So, yeah, there is hope, and uh, yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> would you rather just Facebook? Flam with Larry here. I mean, no, I'm not even paying attention to Larry. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, thoughts on Hashgraph? Tell, I don't know anything about Hashgraph. Do you, Lou? No, I don't. Let me let me check that real quick. What is Hashgraph? I'm going to go Google it right now. So, oh, I just got a message from someone. Oh, that's a private message. I won't repeat that. So uh, let me go and find out what is Hashgraph. Hashgraph. Uh, inventor of Hashgraph speaks at Harvard Business School giving a comprehensive overview of the consensus algorithm. I don't know, man. That looks complicated. It looks like I'm not going to be able to. <clears throat> Something about the future of distributed ledger. ledger to, so Hashgraph, it, it looks like it's. An alternative to the blockchain. Wow, I'll have to check that out, Ken. Uh, and yeah, there are other alternatives out there as well. So uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. No, the message was not from from Lou, by the way, Larry. Uh, hey, Nathan, Nathan Fraser, you're joining just as we're wrapping the show up. So uh, I think I think I think we've reached the end of the show here, and we've ended on a happy note. And the happy note is, dudes, yeah, for every bad story that you see, even even this uh, 
even what's going on with the civil asset forfeiture, they they put themselves into a position where they have to rely on stealing from you in pretty obvious ways that is becoming more and more apparent to them. So they can't just back off, even though it looks horrible and it exposes the true nature of what they really are. They are a coercive enterprise. When I say a coercive enterprise, what I mean is they offer a product or a service that you must buy. And if you do not buy that product or service, you risk being kidnapped and or killed. That's the way a coercive enterprise works. And the fact that they have to fight tooth and nail to try to hold on to every scrap that they're that, that they've built take it's it's kind of like uh uh, I don't know the, the 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 football player who is has built this. His wife has built. He and his wife. I'll just say both of them. They 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 built up this this luxurious lifestyle uh, off of him playing football. And you find out, you know, in in the in the twelfth year of his career, man, he's going to have to retire. But but that means that they're going to lose their their big. Uh, the the revenue coming in and the wife is like no you can't do that man you got to keep pushing but i could like you know i could risk another concussion and die you got to keep going that's what these guys are doing man they got to keep going even though they're going to risk getting another concussion and the concussion is that they're going to become more and more naked in displaying the reality of who they are they're thieves they're a gang of thieves and nothing illustrates this more than 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 the frickin uh civil asset forfeiture we live in a land where everybody proudly proclaims well not everybody certainly the right they proudly proclaim that we're rule of law law and order and and uh the bill of rights and yet we live in a land where everybody just accepts the idea that that these these uh road pirates could just pull somebody over and determine that they have too much money and take it from them. now granted some people that they find that have all this money some of them really are doing illicit things and no I'm not talking about drug dealers I'm talking about you know if they're using it if you know if they stole money from the bank or or something but but really what 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 you who accept this what you are saying is I I would rather catch one actual bad guy and have everybody else be screwed and their very fundamental human rights violated than to have people's rights respected that you say that this land represents and allow one one actual criminal to get away with it. See, I'd rather the criminal get away with it. That's not that I want criminals to get away with it, but I would rather risk criminals getting away with it than giving the state the power to pull someone over and take their stuff and hold on to it. And then that person has to prove they have to prove their innocence. That's not the way it's supposed to work in the rule of law, right? Due process and crap. Right. Due process. Uh, a person's uh, assets can't be seized until it's been proven. Uh, they are required to have a trial by jury. Blah all that, blah blah all blah. That, all blah, that blah, all blah. other right. crap. Yeah, uh, but that but that's providing that the that the law is an entity of itself and its ruling rather than the the people that call themselves the government being the rulers. And on that note, I think I think we're 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 done here. And I thank you once again for being on Is Daily Thursday. Is Daily Thursday wouldn't be Is Daily Thursday without you, so it's pretty important that you're here. Uh, otherwise, there's no Is Daily Thursday. So that's... Thanks for having me. I always enjoy being had by you on Thursdays. I love having you. I really, really love having you a lot. Do you feel uncomfortable now? No, not yet. You could be a lot creepier. <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> I actually can. So uh, on that note, uh, my shows for the week are done. This is the last show of the week for Is Daily. This is Daily Thursday. It's the last show. And also, there's no, no, there's nothing on Friday, man. Friday is Planning and Design Day. I'm actually going to be working on. I'm going to be working on trying to get the 
podcast RSS feeds out there to more places and try to figure out how to promote those more. And this show, this is going to take longer than usual because of that break. I'm probably going to have to do some editing, which is going to delay stuff. But eventually, maybe sometime by, to by tomorrow, sometime, there will be an audio podcast version of this on iTunes. So if you do a search for iState, you should find Is Daily, and you also find headlines you may have missed. Be sure you subscribe to those shows because then you can listen to the audio podcast anytime you want. And on that note, I am, I'll just say uh, good night, everybody. You have anything, any last thing to say? Good night, everybody. Go to freedomfiends.com. Oh, that's right. uh, breaking, breaking the Law with Bastiat and Bastiat Part 2, The Law Breaks You. Oh, oh, and one more thing. I almost forgot. Almost forgot. I am wearing agora.threadless.com. There it is. Can you see that? Uh, it says radical abolitionist on top, and then underneath it says, it's a saying actually for me, free them all and let liberty sort them out. And you're wearing notbeinggoverned.com, but that's not agora.threadless.com. No, I'm it's pitching, not. I'm pitching Bodie's business. Bodie is the Tuesday, uh, the Is Daily Tuesday host. So go to agora.threadless.com. There's all kinds of awesome shirt designs on there, including a really awesome hidden commie shirt that you just got to get, and you got to wear it around your conservative friends. Go to church in it. And if you do go to church in it, please live stream it, like surreptitiously. Wear it Good around night. your conservative friends. Wear the hidden commie shirt with the hidden commies. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night.